All right, so uh, welcome. We have uh, 20 minutes, half session. So this is going to be the challenge round for the community working group, um, fostering community health and demystifying us, um, or half of the community <laughs> working group right here. Um, so Jordana and, and myself will uh, kind of take you through what we've been up to the past year and kind of where we, the direction we're heading in, um, in the future. Um, we're going to have the... All right, you can contact us, sorry. You can contact us uh, via our Twitter handles, or I think in, that's your Drupal.org username as well. No, you're no my Drupal.org username is Jordana. So okay. It's my question. So contact us uh, afterwards if you have any additional questions about anything. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the community working group, this is our mission, <laughs> or part of our mission, I should say, a summary of our mission. Uh, we're here to basically um, uh, promote community health, and uphold the Drupal code of conduct. Um, we often read this as um, both proactive and reactive, which I don't think I've used those two words more um, in my life than in, within the context of the community working group. Um, so upholding the Drupal code of conduct involves a lot of times where there is an issue in the community um, that comes to our attention, that um, someone is, um, is behaving in a way that is in direct conflict with the code of conduct, and we need to get involved and have a conversation and see if we can't right that ship. Um, and then the other half we see as proactive, uh, where we try to um, provide resources to help uh, promote community health. So. Um, just a couple of bullet points here, and I'm not going to go very deep into any of these, but we did want to mention a few of the things that, that we do and that we have been doing um, lately. Um, we uh, are now committed to uh, publishing an annual report. Um, we ha this kind of came out of the community discussions a couple of years ago. Um, and th these are, a lot of this is focused on um, statistics about the types of reports that we get. Um, whether they're, they're you know, conflicts and issue cues or something happening at, um, you know, in, in a Slack channel or some other uh, a Drupal space. Um, so we're actually uh, just about to start the annual report for this year. Yes, got it. <laughs> um, this year we also published a code of conduct template and playbook for Drupal events. So if you are a Drupal event organizer, and you need a resource for having a code of conduct for your own event, um, we have this information. We have links I'll, I'll put up here in a minute um, where you can get all this stuff. We are also, oh, we've organized um, code of conduct contact training. So we are encouraging all Drupal events to send their code of conduct contacts to this training. It's an online half day training. Uh, Jordana just went through it. I'm actually due to go through it next month. Oops, sorry about that. We are working on updating um, the Drupal Code of Conduct, which is no small job. Um, the last time the Code of Conduct was updated was um, right around uh, five or six years ago. I think it was around the time that the um, community working group started going. So uh, there was a survey earlier this year. Um, we're looking into um, Code of Conducts from other open source communities, and we're trying to figure out the best path forward on that. We updated our charter. Um, within the past year. Uh, the big difference there was we no longer um, uh, escalate or report to Dries. Um, we now uh, have a review panel consisting of the two community elected board members of the Drupal Association, and then a third person uh, nominated and uh, placed in the position by the Drupal Association, um, and, uh, uh, and that is someone who is not part of the Drupal community. So currently that role is filled by uh, John O'Bacon, who is, um, uh, well, if you, I don't know what's the best way to do it. He's, He's a, a great open source health, uh, community yeah. health advocate and ambassador. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, and so I'm going to let Jordana take over here for a minute or two. Thank you. Uh, we've noticed that a lot of people um, don't want to file reports with us because they're not sure if they have concerns, but if the concern is large enough. So we wanted to call attention to the fact that we have a little checkbox that says, we want you to be aware of this, but not necessarily take action. So this is great for us to sometimes see patterns of behavior we wouldn't normally see. So something small for you 
if it happens um, consistently over time, it has a cumulative effect and it might be a pattern of behavior that is more concerning and of a, 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 a larger, something that is actionable that we can maybe stop before it becomes something bigger. Yeah, a lot of times these are things that are brought to our attention directly mm -hmm. by seeing us in person. And it's, it, the conversation usually starts with something along the lines of, um, there's this thing happening and I'm not sure if it's actually a thing. <laughs> or if I'm not sure if it's appropriate or I'm not sure if, you know, what, this, what the deal is. Um, so stuff like that is, you know, we appreciate um, because it allows us to often get ahead of things before they be actually become a real issue. So speaking of that, sometimes when things become real issues, um, we have to sometimes take action um, and maybe ask certain people to either refrain from coming to events or um, uh, uh, maybe ask them to step down from leadership positions. But we are of the opinion, like we strongly feel um, that people can make mistakes, everybody makes mistakes, but that they should have a way back and a way to um, rectify those mistakes and uh, be able to rejoin the community if they, if they, if they do the work. So this has always been a, kind of a balancing act with, with, for us for how do we balance accountability but also have that door open that if they want to change and if they want to make uh, be a better community member that they should have the option to do that. So we have a blog post that we recently submitted. Um, it's on, it's the links over there with our thoughts and the process we do. So, yeah. yeah, we've been through this process with. Uh, you know, more than a few people. It's, uh, it's not easy, it's not quick, and very few people are willing to do the work once they realize. Once we, yeah, once we talk to them about what the expectations are. Um, so we have a very high bar, is basically what we're saying, uh, <laughs> uh, in, in rejoining and get, getting it back. So this is yeah. why not everybody chooses to continue. Yeah. So uh, we encourage, you know, we know that this, this has been something that I know that community members have asked me about, um, and I'm sure Jordana as well and the other two members of, I should probably mention the other two members of the CWG. <laughs> I need to go back and fix the recording. <laughs> so, our, <laughs> so our chair is uh, George, Demet, uh, George Demet from Palantir.net, um, and uh, Alex Burroughs from the UK is the fourth member of the community working group. So. The four of us, I'm sure, I know I can speak for myself and, and, and Jordana can speak for herself here, but we've definitely had conversations about this, about um, people re-entering the community. And it's, there's, there's a lot of emotion involved with it. Um, and we, we greatly value, as we do with all issues involving conflict resolution, we greatly value confidentiality. We want people to feel comfortable talking to us and not feel that we are going to you know, violate their privacy. So a lot of times it's difficult for us to talk about, so we wanted a way for us to be able to, um, to, to provide something back to the community about what that process looks like. So the result of that is this, is this blog post, which I think pretty accurately reflects um, you know, what we feel and um, how difficult the process actually is for people to, to go through. And it's, it's, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy for any of us, any of us um, even the ones who are not going through the process but helping to guide the process. Um, so the other thing that we um, have uh, going on, and this has been going on for a couple of months, we've been talking about it for a little bit longer, um, but currently we're four members and we are all part of the conflict resolution team and every other team that the CWG has, <laughs> meaning we do both proactive and reactive. Um, and honestly, we do proactive as time permits. Uh, the proactive stuff is like the code of conduct contact, contact training or the, um, the code of conduct um, uh, um, playbook and, and template or these blog posts. We have, a, we have a list of blog posts that we should write that you know probably six or seven um, blog posts long um, and we've been struggling with how can we expand in a, a healthy way to be you know uh, to be pretty frank about it um, we know that coming into the CWG and you know immediately doing conflict resolution is uh, difficult at best 
-hmm. You know, Jordana yeah. and, and Alex have been the, 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 the two most recent members, and it's, you know, it's being thrown to the wolves a little bit. So we've thought about that, and we've talked to some community members, and um, what we've decided to do is we've decided to pursue a role-based expansion. And um, Tara is actually helping us with this. We've been working with Tara for uh, over a month now, at least, I would say, talking about it. Um, but number one, these, you know, these roles are separate and not involved with the conflict resolution tasks. Um, we're seeing this as a gentler introduction to the CWG. Um, uh, just from a workload and a, and, a, and a knowledge standpoint, as well as from a privacy standpoint. So um, new members of the CWG who are not in the conflict resolution role will not have access to that, that information. Um, so we're kind of siloing, up, siloing off the conflict resolution uh, aspect of it. Um, but we have, and we are in the process of defining um, a bunch of other roles that we are looking, going to be looking to fill over the, ne the next few months. Um, some of these already kind of unofficially exist or officially we call, um, we have several geographic slash cultural um, folks that help us out. Uh, we call them subject matter experts. They're not members of the CWG, but they are trusted community members who we have interviewed and talked to and when we have an issue that involves a, 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 a geographic region or a culture that, that one of us is not familiar with, we kind of bring them into that issue. And they, um, they have to abide by the same code of ethics that the rest of us do as far as privacy. Um, but we kind of want to expand that and we want to, kind of, we want to have a, a bigger roster for that and make sure we cover the, you know, the regions and the cultures uh, that, that are necessary for our community. Um, we're going to have a membership role. Uh, filled by Tara King. Initially, Tara King, who's going to help us define and, and, who and fill these who has roles. Has been helping us. Yes, thank you. It's not like she hasn't isn't doing enough, but thank yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the one that we probably I think is going to give us the biggest bang for the buck initially is the community health initiatives, and these are all the proactive things that we want to be doing that we don't have time for. These are the things like organizing more workshops at DrupalCons and hopefully some of the other Drupal events around the world. These are things like providing more resources on Drupal.org um, for, uh, for community members uh, you know, under the purview of community health. Um, there's some great ideas that came out of DrupalCon, was Seattle? Or I, I can never keep track of it, the previous, it was Seattle, Seattle. right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, about things we can do in the issue queue and possibly on Slack to help you know, when, when, when a conversation starts going sideways a little bit, we call them nudges, to gently nudge the conversation back and remind folks of the code of conduct. Um, so we have these really great ideas, but we, we don't have, the four of us do not have the time to implement them. So we're looking for folks to, you know, who are willing to kind of help with the, those efforts. Um, group liaisons. Um, so a lot of times we have to interface with various other parts of Drupal, whether it's the Drupal Association, whether it's a working group, whether it's um, you know a, 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 a bunch of camp organizers, um, so we're looking to um, kind of fill the pre-fill those roles so that when there is an issue, we already know who we can go to talk to, um, and they know how we operate and things like that. Um, one that I know the four of us are crazy excited about is this last one: the open source community health ambassador. Um, we have had um, uh, ad hoc discussions with members from other um, open source communities uh, about code of conducts and process and structure. And um, in this area, the, the, you know, we are, uh, from what we've seen, mm -hmm. um, we are far ahead of other open source communities in the way, in our structure and our process and our documentation. Um, so we are often in the position of giving out advice to other open source communities when it comes to community health and code of conduct and, and, and things like that. Um, so we see it, we see that there's a huge opportunity to kind of create, as, as George, our chair, calls it, the UN of open, of open source community health. Um, representatives from different open, uh, open source communities coming together, exchanging knowledge, and basically uh, you know, a rising tide will, will lift all boats. Um, this is something I think any one of the four of us would jump at to do if, if we could. Um, but we're really excited about this and we think that this could gain traction fast among open source communities with Drupal being the leader. Um, 
so we are, uh, you know, we are open to all ideas. And, and if you or someone you know might be interested in, in working with us on in filling one of these roles or ideas on something that we missed, uh, please let us know. Um, we are uh, in, the, you know, we have a, a fairly good idea of the direction we're going, um, but it's not too late to, you know, to give us ideas that will, you know, cause us to stop and think and, 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 and add some, some new stuff. And we, we heard the thing, like a lot of people tell us, uh, we would, I would, I'm really interested in helping you guys, but we don't have, I don't have the time. A lot of these roles we are seeing as kind of team roles or, and, and I forget how, what you call it, where it's t a time based. So it's going to be like a, in a, maybe a one month period here. And so it is, it is, we're trying to make it so that it's going to be as work well as well as possible for people where we're not overloading anybody. We're going to try not to do that as much as possible. Right. Something Tara and I have talked about and we've talked about internally as well is we want to create on ramps and off ramps for all of these roles. Uh, most selfishly the conflict resolution roles mm -hmm. as well. Um, so we want, you know, we want people to be able to kind of cycle into these roles, get the information they need and not have it being an it, not having it be an indefinite time period like saying you're going to be in this role for a year or however long you're comfortable but one of your tasks is going to be identify who's going to fill in behind you and get them ready so um, we kind of want to learn that process and learn what, what, what we need to have in place to facilitate that process but um, as you know the role that we're in uh, you know sometimes it seems like it's inescapable which, you know, that's one of the reasons why we feel it's important that we need to kind of bake that type of thing in from the beginning to get that in, in, in kind of into the CWG DNA. All right, so here are the links I promised. The bit.ly links are case sensitive. So everything is basically under the Drupal Community Working Group um, on, on, on Drupal.org. Um, there's a link there to all of our blog posts. The Code of Conduct resources, um, this is for camp organizers. Um, is that the second link? And then the Camp Organizer Speaker Diversity Workshop, which I should probably just let uh, Tara talk about that real quick. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the keynote, we are helping uh, provide training. Yes. Uh, we are providing a free three hour training uh, on November 16th. 16th. Thank you. On Zoom, so anyone in the world can take it. Um, it will give you the resources you need to help underrepresented people in your community uh, develop talks and pitch them to your local camp. Um, it's so good. I, I like. I'm not uh, the one who made the training, so I feel like I can say that. Um, it's just sign up here, um, and it's we. It's from the WordPress community. They had huge results from it, so it's like a proven model. Very exciting. All right. So I know we only have uh, like a minute and a half left. So questions, anyone? So with the recent change in the charter, um, fall under the DA and the, the community at large members, does that open up opportunities to have a budget of any kind? Or, like, uh, do you have any ideas yes. that you would bring to them? So, so there are a couple um, uh, re you know, driving reasons why we changed the charter. Number one was the report, you know, our, our um, escalation point. You know, it was clear that Dries didn't want to be in that position anymore. Um, the community felt it needed to be more representative of, of the community. So we came up with this idea of, well, we, we have two members of the community who are elected to a board. So that was our starting point. So um, that was one aspect. The other aspect was there are definitely issues where um, sometimes we need to consult with a, you know, an attorney. So by going under the DA, it made it very easy for us to be able to ask the DA if we could have some time with the attorney um, before we respond to an issue. And we're legally protected now, so people can't sue us. Yes. Personally. Yes, yes. <laughs> so um, and it also does open up for us to request funding from the DA. We actually have, uh, we had our introductory call with Heather not too long ago, the new executive director of the DA. Um, where we had very initial discussions about, you know, the types of things that we were hoping to be able to request. Um, it's like funding for training, but funding for like our Slack, for example, so we can have other people in there without them seeing channels they shouldn't be seeing, for yeah. example. Uh, yeah. 
Did we answer your question, I think? Yes. Okay. All right, we should probably wrap up. If anybody else has any questions, grab one of us outside tomorrow or Thursday. Or find us online. Any ideas, any yeah. suggestions, anything. Mm-hmm. Me too. Oh. I'm Sparkling Robots yes. on the internet or in the hallways um, if you want to talk about membership stuff, if you're interested in getting involved. Yes. I should have put you, I'm sorry, Tara. I didn't even think about it. We talked you. about this two hours ago. It's yeah, fine. I know. Okay. All right. <laughs> we were definitely prepared before two hours ago. Sorry. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We just didn't talk about the details. Yeah. Yeah.